Um, good afternoon. Um, I would like to begin by thanking Jahan for inviting me to moderate this amazing panel, and to Jahan and Peter Miller for organizing this important symposium. Um, I'm Carmen Lamas, and I am in the English and American Studies English Department and American Studies Program, and I am a professor of Latinx literatures. Um, it is my pleasure and privilege to introduce our three distinguished poets and scholars who will be presenting <laughs> this afternoon. Ura Joan Noel, J. Edward Chamberlain, and E.B. Shoku. I am going to provide very brief introductions so our speakers may have ample time for their presentations and so that we may have more time for the question and answer period. But I did, I know a lot of my students are here and a lot of undergraduates that are here. The very first question that when we open the floor to questions, I'm going to ask the undergraduates to pose a question. So if you could, during the um, debate, <laughs> you <laughs> 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 All right, so Uri Uri Yuan is a South Bronx-based writer, critic, performer, translator, and intermedia artist originally from San Juan, Puerto Rico. He is an associate professor of English and Spanish at New York University and also teaches at Stetson University's MFA of the Americas. Noel is the author of seven books of poetry, and I'm going to write not all of them because I want you to go out and get them. Okay? Enunciador, one. Los Días Porosos, two. High Density Politics, three, Boring Pen, four, Cool Logic, La Logica Cool, a different book, Explore del Mar, and most recently, Buzzing Hemisphere, Humor en Espero, as well as the critical study, Invisible, Invisible Movement, New Yorican Poetry from the 60s to Slam, an amazing book, which was, which was awarded the Latin American Studies Association Latino Studies Book Award as translator. His works include the bilingual edition, Architecture of Dispersed Life, Selected Poetry by Pablo de Roca, and the chapbook, No Voodoo, Please, by Winston Gonzalez, forthcoming from the Ugly Duckling Press. His non-print work ranges from durational performance and tech sound video installations to collaborative projects with musician composer Monzo Lopez, artist Martha Clippinger, and dancer choreographer Alethea Pace, among others. Noel has received fellowships from the Ford Foundation, the Howard Foundation, and Canto Mundo. He will be speaking today about what they don't tell you about hashtag Latinx. <laughs> Total Mundo Presente. <laughs> okay, so I did not realize uh, when I um, uh, when I arrived that uh, there was a whole crew that had been reading my poetry, so I might have to redo the poetry set list at the end. I had thought of um, uh, speaking a little bit uh, uh, about my new project, uh, which is not really a poetry slash poetic project. It's uh, uh, it's a project focusing on Latinx folks and social media, right? Uh, and it, but it builds on where my New Rican uh, poetry, my, my study of New Rican poetry left off. Basically, as I was finishing my, uh, that project, I would ask younger poets, well, where does your activism come in? Thinking about the, the role of activism in foundational 1960s New Rican poets, right? On the ground, in the city, in the barrios, right? And everybody would say, well, online. I learned about online activism in a way that makes sense, right? And doesn't, doesn't trivialize it compared to these like 60s and uh, post 60s legacies of activism. And I realized I probably deserved uh, it, it, uh, its own book project. Uh, and again, the work of poets uh, actually figured prominently uh, in, the, in the emergence of these, uh, these uh, hashtag uh, models of, um, of Latina. So, it was something like this. Um, in a viral September 2018 essay, The X in Latinx is a wound, not a trend, Alan Pelaez Lopez, pronoun they, a self-described, quote, Afro-indigenous poet, collage, installation, and adornment artist from Oaxaca, Mexico, whose work explores, quote, the intersections of PTSD, undocumented immigration, indigeneity, queer feelings, and black flesh, 
writes, quote, my mother's advice to tener cuidado, be careful, and the death of a trans sister represent the wound that trans and gender non-conforming Latin Americans wear as we navigate a Latinidad that has yet to love us. He goes on, they go on, by us, I refer to those who are too queer, too black, too Indian, Indian? too femme, too angry to be Latin American. For this reason, an essay on what the X in Latinx really means is not only useful, but necessary. Elias Lopez concludes the reflection by urging us, it is important for us to not to normalize Latinx, but to engage in critical reflection of how violence against lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, asexual Latin Americans has been accepted by Latin American people to the point that LGBTQIA Latinx folks have had to create a linguistic intervention in the hopes that they can live a livable life. In queering and transing Latinidad, poets such as Peláez López and Sonia Villansaca have been central to the emergence of the much maligned and much misunderstood Latinx, uh, a term that revises the terms of Latinidad away from proximity to whiteness, from the assimilationist fantasies of the nuclear family that undergird liberal immigration politics, and you think of, let's not tear biological families apart, right? That's like those kinds of discourses and the kind of Latinidad that they assume. And from the legacies and ongoing realities of Latin American queer uh, phobia and transphobia as enmeshed with anti-blackness and anti-ingenuity. There is a generational aspect here, to be sure, in as much as Pelaez Lopez's essay reflects what Nicole Guidotti Hernandez calls, quote, uh, American millennials' use of Latinx to transcend gender, racial, class, and regional constraints they see emanating from boomer generation ethno-nationalist formations. And that ethno-national formation is a big challenge for those of us who work in right, uh, ethnic, right, multi-ethnic uh, US uh, poetics, right, given how that field is developed. Still, in my reading, Latinx's life as a hashtag on social networking sites like Tumblr, which led to the terms going viral for 2014-15, uh, embodies its signifying density, beyond just being a term that allows those using it to transcend the ethno-nationalist constraints of the older term Latino. And even then, I would say there's a counter history of the term Latino existing alongside it toys against the ethno-nationalist movimiento politics of the 1960s and 1970s. I refer you to my essay, Remediating the Latino, Latin Act 60s in American Literary History, where I look at folks like the Royal Chicano Air Force and uh, the uh, Visual Arts of Maldonado, right, as folks who were invested in this kind of virtual politics of Latinidad, right, uh, which was uh, not necessarily the ethno-nationalist kind, although aligned with it in, in uneasy ways. One underappreciated aspect of hashtags is their taxonomical value the ways in which they allow for folksonomies or folk taxonomies not defined by traditional top-down models of expertise. Despite the existence of the alternative non-binary non term Latin at, right, Latin for the at sign, uh, famously used by Juana Maria Rodriguez in Queer Latinidad, 2003, and Mira Nimena Román and the late Juan Flores in the Afro-Latin at Reader, 2009, two crucial interventions that urge us to engage Latinidad beyond sexual, gender, racial binaries, the social media environment galvanized around Latinx, and for reasons beyond its non-binary politics. This is important. So when folks say Latinx is just a non-binary PC way to say Latino, not, not quite. Uh, on the influential mixed Latinx's Tumblr account, Latinx, which is one of the ways <coughs> that helps Latinx uh, go viral, Latinx is defined expansively as, quote, someone who comes from Latin American country, i.e. Brazil, Importante, right? Importante. Uh, <laughs> Colombia. Whereas a Hispanic is someone who comes from a Spanish speaking country. You can be just one of them. For example, someone from Brazil would only be considered Latinx because they speak Portuguese in Brazil. Someone from Spain would only be considered Hispanic because they speak Spanish, but not Latinx since they are not a Latin American country. Right? So I'm supposed to distinguish that from uh, Hispanic. Right? Uh, not all Latinxes are Hispanic either, so it, uh, um, uh, the term homogenizes Latin America into a group that speaks Spanish when that is not the case. It's a fascinating Tumblr, and it's interesting to think about how that Tumblr uses the, these terms and how they relate to the ways in which we use them now. Um, 
the fiercely trans-American politics of Latinx are echoed uh, in the work of queer, trans, undocu-queer poet activists, such as Perez Lopez, who we already mentioned, Julio Salgado, Josima Reyes, Jennifer Tamayo, uh, and Sonia Guinanzaga, all of them affiliated with the Oakland-based Culture Strike, a social justice organization founded in 2011, and whose website proclaims, quote, we are primarily people of color and first or second generation migrants, and our work draws from our unique experiences as women, LGBTQ, working class, and undocumented people. And of course, uh, one of the big folks behind Culture Strike is Ken Chen, who also does the Jamaican Writers Workshop. So thinking about Asian, American, and Latinx, right, points of intersection around new kinds of uh, undocumented and undocu-queer, uh, and new kinds of brownness and yellowness, right, that are complicating uh, the terms of racialization in the U.S. and class racialization would be a super important uh, way of expanding this conversation. In the Ecuador-born, Harlem-raised, and formerly undocumented Guillermo Saca's work, as in Pelaez Lopez and the mixed Latinx's Tumblr, the politics of Latinx is inseparable from both the experience of being racialized in the U.S. and from the new modes of brownness, blackness they bring with them, Afro-Mexicanness in Pelaez's case, and, uh, Ecuadorian American and in Indian Saka, both of which are largely invisible in a U.S. context, and also threatening to their home country's fragile constru constructs of racialized and sexual gender passing, both aligned with the hegemonic mestizaje. So both uh, national identities in Latin America and uh, U.S. Uh, Latinidad are being challenged here. In doing so, they are querying blackness and brownness as understood in the U.S., as in the black-brown passages Claudia Guillén described in her important book, Latin in America, 2013. Guillén Saca's Instagram account, uh, her handle is, uh, their handle is at the Sonia G, uh, uh, check her out, uh, gives us a sense of the hashtag uh, politics of Latinx as they place uh, strategically alongside hashtags such as uh, QTPOC, queer trans person of color, hashtag migrant, hashtag, hashtag gender nonconforming. I feel like some like weird hashtag, like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, and, and especially my favorite, uh, poppy femme, a trademark phrase that also appears in Guinea Saka's poetry and is the name of a second Instagram account, uh, at the poppy femme, with a few curated uh, photos that experiment with various forms of performatively gendered self-presentation and, and fashion. By one reading my poetry, we would look at some of Vina Saka's really fascinating uh, Instagram work. I think there's a really interesting kind of poet who's doing the equivalent of like what, say, uh, Cardi B or Bad Bunny are doing, where their Instagram is an as interesting as the actual work, right? The, 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 the nominal, right, uh, commercial work that they do. Uh, so I'm fascinated by kind of Instagram self-curation. I could say much more about the hashtag Latinx and about how Guinea Saka and other queer, non-conforming, and docu poets have helped define its politics, and in doing so, challenge and revise the politics of Natividad. But since this is a poetry conference, <laughs> let's go there. The title of this talk is a riff on Guinea Saka's viral poem, What They Don't Tell You When You Migrate. A staple of her readings and performances that also appeared, appears in her 2017 chapbook. Nostalgia and Borders, I think I have it on me, I'll show it in a second. A chapel whose cover features a striking black and white sketch of Guinean Saka by artist Romito Rico with the phrases queer migrant Latinx and femme of color at the bottom of the image. Despite this relatively simple diction and minimal poetic effects, the poem is exceedingly powerful in how it negotiates a dress. The, the title you is recognizably performative as signaling Guinean Saka, but also opens up to the unmarked migrant. While the she at the end, and I quote from the poem, she won't make it into healthcare packages, she won't be remembered during press conferences, she will be dissected, research, 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 and research about how much she doesn't belong will be published, is nominally the mother of the you figure in the poem. But she also risks blurring into that you, so that mother and child bleed into one another in an eerie, uh, mediation of cross-generational migrant struggle and trauma, and in a performance of femhood that radically revises male worker Latino migrant tropes, so central to the sociology and the literature of Latinidad. And uh, parentheses, this also is in the poem, right, because it describes the working father, right, and the politics of, of, of working masculinity, but complicates the gender picture. Could we uh, uh, have the audio for, for the poem? Yeah. <laughs> Bursting a photograph of the trying to squeeze out old memories. Different title. They don't tell you this when you migrate. 
Old photos are never enough. You left tracing the silhouettes of your grandparents or whatever sent them. How many years has it been? Five, ten, or twenty? It's been twenty. Twenty. In those twenty years, you have been asked to hide your accent. Saw your tongue so that no more arch rolled out. Straighten up so that way Jesus accepts you so that lawyers help you. Dig out the roots of your home from underneath your nails. Cut your trenza. Pledge allegiance to the flag. And when you cannot, each thread will cut through every inch of you to teach you your kind was not meant for this country. That told you that they will measure your success based on how smart you could be. So you tried to be smart. Books after books, you chase vocabulary for value, legislation to give you meaning. Yes, sir, I am a skilled worker. Yes, sir, I can contribute. No, sir, I haven't committed any crimes. Pin against one another, you remember that your mother almost didn't make it through the border or any legislation this time around. She will make it into healthcare packages. She will be remembered during press conferences. She will be dissected and research and research and research and research research about how much she doesn't belong will be published. They don't tell you this when you migrate. Okay, next we think. <laughs> <laughs> so here are the intersection of anti-Latinx slash migrant slash indigenous violence and gender violence are embodied in that line, cut your trenza, brave, which returns us to the politics of hair, as central to the policing of Latinx and especially femme Latinx bodies and to the braidedness of identity in Bina Saka's work. We could also say a lot as a scholar of performance poetry about performance, right? How uh, Bina Saka's reading barrels through the use in the poem, making us wonder if we as listeners are being interpolated. Right? And I would ask us to compare that to the kind of relational you in black arts and Eurekan poetry that I write about in, in my book that asks us in a way to, to stage diaspora, right? Um, uh, and maybe also even like the postmodern you with like people like Ashbeard, right? Not like Ever, something totally different. We could reflect that's that's, that's a bad one language. We could reflect on how Binyasaka's performance seems to refuse to distinguish between various voices uh, in the poem or between Spanish words like prensa and the rest of the English text. Uh, we are in the intersubjective and interlingual space where Latinx is negotiated, but we are also outside, like the researchers witnessing how, quote, she doesn't belong, right? The third person undoes the relational you and makes us aware of the privilege of our own witnessing and listening. And taking a step back, we could think of the NPR performance, right, that we're listening to, which, is, which in turn is posted to SoundCloud and in turn linked to on the poet's website as enmeshing us in a web of remediations, right, that asks us to connect the uh, elite liberalism, right, of the NPR crowd to the kinds of epistemological politics of hashtag Latinx as it operates uneasily from above and from below. Uh, and, and last, thing, uh, last step, we might think about Kimia Saka's Harlem as well, right? One thing I noticed, right, is the use of New York uh, uh, vernacular English, right? Acts for acts, right? Largely based on African-American vernacular English, right? And the kinds of, of hauntings there and how similar some of the lines there about class struggle are to something like Beatrice Puerto Rican obituary, right? Another Latinx text that is marked by African American vernacular English and the reimagined uh, Harlem, right? Uh, as a space of, uh, uh, of uh, cross race uh, and pan diasporic struggle. So uh, I think I'll, I'll leave it there. How am I doing time-wise for a couple of poems? Sure. Okay, cool. I actually have a video of Ginyan Saka, but you gotta choose uh, probably uh, less less Ginyan Saka and more me, so I'll just uh, uh, can send it to uh, the crew and they can put it up on the, on the website. But Ginyan Saka is fierce, and, and that video really, it's on the website, twinginyansaka.com, but it really connects uh, the, the politics of, uh, of the poetry to the kinds of uh, intersectional identities that we've been mentioning throughout. Uh, okay, so I'll do a couple of pieces. I'll start off with uh, um, think a lot about uh, self-translation, right? Uh, I'm especially interested in maybe reading uh, translingual moments, 
right, in poems that aren't necessarily radically translingual, right? I wouldn't say that that Guillén Saca poem was, right, a couple of Spanish words, right? Uh, so in a kind of conventional, I'll say, multi-ethnic 80s reading of the poem, we would say we would kind of, 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 uh, of, uh, of uh, domesticate those words, right, for their kind of, of uh, you know, multi-ethnic consumption, but I'm not sure in the, in the ways in which a word like trenza there, right, associations with indigeneity, with racialized hair, right, uh, um, with the kinds of, of, of uh, braided politics uh, in, in her work, uh, could really challenge, right, uh, the uh, reading of the poem from a translingual perspective. So we'll do a little translingual piece, uh, give a shout out to, uh, um, to Sitsi for, for rocking the Caribe. This is called Caribes, and it's a, uh, uh, she must be somewhere with a kid somewhere. Um, and it's an an anagrammatic, hey, anagrammatic, <laughs> anagrammatic chant or canto anagrammatico, so it's a found poem also. I've got an anagram generator to find anagrams for Caribes, Caribbeans, in, uh, in English and in Spanish, right? And then to, so it's really short. <clears throat> y muy sencillo para ustedes. <laughs> <laughs> Ascribe Caribes. Escriba Caribes. Ascribe Caribes. Bisecar Caribes. Secret Caribes. Recibas Caribes. Caribes. Si cabré. Caribes. I discar. I don't know, if you don't like it, it's not my fault. <laughs> 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 so these are, these are, these are lean toward kind of business words. I've written a little bit about, uh, I was an essay published on, um, on uh, digital translation in my work. It's yeah. really weird to be considered a digital artist for doing bad app-based uh, poetry. <laughs> but I'm sure now, uh, again, non-equivalent translation functions in that sense because of the algorithmic biases of apps, right, which privilege all kinds of business words, right? Uh, you see some of my homophonic cell translations, how everything is about like ATMs and you know, Citibank and so on, right? So the kinds of uh, 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 neoliberal creoles, right, that we get uh, from, uh, from technology and what kinds of language that, uh, that crowds out. Okay, so I'll do this, uh, this is a set of sonnets and I picked this, uh, it came out a couple of years ago, um, but I thought I'd read it here. First of all, inspired by the great uh, Javier Zamora, a young, uh, uh, Salvadoran American uh, poet uh, who's, um, uh, who's a colleague from the Canto Mundo crew. This is written while we were together at uh, Canto Mundo, um, and it's uh, a series of, of sonnets. Uh, but I thought also uh, uh, Javier's work is work with the Andaki poets, who folks might, might know, who fought for a couple of years to make sure that uh, poetry contests remove, or literary contests in general, removed. Uh, the uh, residency, right, and, uh, and, and uh, requirements, right, for their eligibilities, and they were successful uh, in those efforts. So I think of Samora, who is, uh, as far as I know, right, cis and straight, right, so, uh, but is a poet who represents many of those emergent, right, Central American, South American, Latinidades, right, uh, whose book uh, uh, also unaccompanied, also documents his own crossing unaccompanied, right, uh, uh, from El Salvador, right, which is, uh, uh, I see his work also as challenging the kinds of Latinidad, right, that, that, are, that, are, that, are, that are domesticated and that assume all these kinds of uh, liberal understandings of what immigration politics are or should be. Also thinking of the ways in which things like the Chicano movement and Puerto Rican movement for different reasons minimize or marginalize uh, uh, immigration as a political occupation which in the Chicano context because of the, of the uh, legacy of the braceros and not wanting to repeat some of, that, of those politics in the case of Puerto Rico because of Puerto Rico's unique Right, uh, 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 citizenship, right, uh, situation, or colonial citizenship uh, situation. So I think the problem of immigration is a pressing one. Uh, and I think the, the, these poets, uh, such as the ones I mentioned, and the Samora, uh, are urging us to reflect on this. But this is much cheesier. It's called Bat Sonnets. Uh, we were hanging out in Austin, which has the, the Congress Bridge with the bats or whatever. And so uh, Javier Samuel, I said a shit ton of bats, and I said we should make poems out of that because it's such a silly phrase, right? I dared him. Uh, he still has not published his, and mine came out like a year later. I'm a professional poet, so that's all right. Epigraph, a shit ton of bats. Javier Samuel, Austin, July 2015. For my fellow Canto Mundistas. <clears throat> Maybe I'll do my phone here. Our, our freestyle flows like a shit ton of bats to steal a phrase from Javier Zamora, taxonomists of capital flora, 
We barns from the city with verbal gats and take aim at the hedge fund plutocrats, trolling us on social justice forum. Freedom is a flick of the fedora. They own our land, but not our poets' hats. Looking for a city to get lost in. We were dreaming we came upon it. Its border, the bodies that we crossed in. Cursing in street Spanish, not doggone it. Much like the Chiroptera of Austin, we tag a bridge with our sonar sonnet. What's in a shit ton? I'll ask Zamora. It's hard to count amid the faceless frats. After a few palabras and frugats, we explore poet's channel, Dora. No map, no app, survey Dora. Where are the bodegas and laundromats amid the loft conversion ziggurats? What gives the place its iconic aura? Hint. It's not about ironic flannel, artisanal cupcakes, or IPAs, a meme workshop, or a hashtag panel for zombie PhDs and MFAs. Our dream streets broadcast on a bat channel whose bat signal reverberates for days. Barrio echolocution sounds like bats. Bachata petrarchs wail for their Laura. Tejano dive bars bleed raza sonora. Must mohawked hipsters with designer tats sip 10 buck drinks to wax DJ ersatz? We want sounds not streaming on Pandora. Beats spelunkers aiming for Aurora. Moonwalking in chancleta high heel flats. In Spanish, bats murciélago, blind mouse. I see us all in the beer-soaked moon, though. We bump and grind, and Lupe owns the house, and Sandra swings that reggaeton tune, though. So much flor y canto in our mundo, because there's no teoría without caos. El Google says they're Mexican free tale, the bats that migrate to that Congress bridge. Not called my back, but someone's privilege. Think the Congress and the suits they've never failed, and the corporate corpses they've retailed. Electory, electorally, they'll speak our language. Yo hablo un poquito, not a smidge. <laughs> but who are the deported and surveilled? Who owns our urban archipelagos? Words privatized. Once the escuela goes, nostalgia factories, hard sell a goes. Like Big Macs at the maquiladora. But no one bats down us murcielagos. Let's swarm vanilla streets till glam Gomorrah. And I have a bat coda, which is a kind of Boricua bat coda, so the shouts out here, you can't be a Boricua writing about bats and not have Roberto Clemente, right? <laughs> and then that evoked Clemente Sotoele, one of our great revolutionary utopian nationalist poets. And if you have Clemente, you have to have Julian Burgos, because uh, you just have to. So here goes, bat coda. Running out of rhymes, ending in aura, and going batty from a lack of bats, I map the spirit's wordless habitats. Free riffing like Williams on his Cora, yeah, William Carlos is there. <laughs> Son of a fierce Boricua Senora, as am I, one of many Rican brats, all born too late to be Boogaloo cats. Watch Clemente bat or Julia score a run online. My broomstick <laughs> back will shatter that Clemente. Rode a wooden stallion. I'll invoke the island's antimatter, the hemisphere's popular battalion that claims its peace beautiful rebellion of batshit particles born to scatter. One more, okay, let's do one short one. Any, I guess, requests from the... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I'll see if I can find it. No? Sing. Want me to sing? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in, in lieu of singing, I'll do, I'll do a short poem and then a brief improvisation. I'll try to get some shout outs to. Uh, okay, listen up. Let's, let's do this one for. Uh, uh, for Jahan for El Prophet. El Prophet. And uh, let me rock the, uh, the app then. Oh, to coffee, oh, that cafe, after Juan Luis Guerra. <laughs> From Africa to a Caribbean hill, de Africa las lomas del Caribe, to the smiling ruin of our cities, 
a la feliz ruina de ciudades. Anoint the neural vessels we refill. Al matorral neural en donde vive. Until your acid muse drowns our peas. Guagriamusa que ahoga soledades. Return us to our tribe that grew dark beans. Devuelvemos al semillero isleño. Cut through the grease of our late night omelets. Metaboliza la grasa nocturna and warm this empty diner by the club. Trae tu calor a nuestro desvelo, where luckless lovers stare at tiny screens. Haz que el amante no muera de sueño, and poets brew old socks into songlets. Tu borra es buena que embadurna, while dreaming it rains coffee from above. Y sombría tu alegría de cielo, now this is the part where the poem ends. <laughs> so I have nothing set. I guess I'll say something about UVA. <laughs> UVA poet too. I'd be the only one. And UVA kind of sounds like la lluvia. Yo no soy rubia, soy calva. I don't know what that means. There must be a support group for us. But it's the poetry world. Everybody has dubious fashion and hair choices. <laughs> Except for our panelists. <laughs> I can myself. John, where do you find these people? <laughs> they bring them more to poetry, not an easy thing to do. I hope your undergrads realize how this is not representative. <laughs> Institutional poetry space. I have to say, I was a little afraid doing hashtag politics at UVA last year. I had to rethink this project once the 2016 election happened. Come up in SAR, in Murabitar, and hashtag no está en el backyard de la mente, esta es la frente, la improvisación de la nación, in English, in Spanish, in Spanish. This is my app, my app and stance, a different kind of meeting. They asked me if I dance, so I'll show my app dance. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no L in there. There's no L, what are you on? Please don't me to me for a really cheesy joke. I promise I'm finishing. I can't be the bro who doesn't give people room to speak. I can't take over the place, but my phone is dying. That means I have nothing based to improvise with. And la improvisación está la nación. Charlottesville, no es tan vil como pensaba. Don't kill Bill, don't kill the poet, don't kill the messenger. No aniquilemos la posibilidad de la palabra. Que se palabra que se improvisa sin visa en la nación. Desde el cuerpo improvisado. Much ado about nothing. My voice is getting boring. Boring pen. You didn't pay me enough to get my grade A top notch poetry riff going on. So it's not really good at music, but call it performance art. Call it participatory poetics. Watch out, in 10 years, there'll be a paper on this. That's how academia cannibalizes its own. That's how it reiterates privilege. Aren't we all just in a bubble of privilege? And I'm benefiting from it. But guess what? You're all beautiful. A beautiful privilege. Now we need to hit the fridge and have something cold like this flow. Gotta go. Yo, gracias.